a reaction that gives out heat to the surroundings is called an exothermic reaction. For exothermic reactions, the products have less chemical energy than the reactants since chemical energy is converted to heat and released to the surroundings and increases in the temperature. Obviously, a combustion reaction is exothermic because burning produces heat energy. Other exothermic reactions include neutralization reactions and displacement reactions. A reaction that absorbs heat from the surroundings is called an endothermic reaction. For endothermic reactions, the products have more chemical energy than the reactants. So in order to supply the extra energy, heat is absorbed from the surroundings and the temperature in the surrounding gas goes down. An example of endothermic reactions would be thermal decomposition. Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. SHC is measured in joules per gram per degree Celsius. So when it comes to measuring the enthalpy changes, that is how much heat given in or taken out during a reaction, we can use a simple formula. Q equals mc delta T or heat energy equals mass into specific heat capacity into temperature change. Now that we've got the equation, let's take a look at the experiments that we'll have to carry out. The technique for this calorimetry is that we use the heat from a reaction to heat another substance and then use the Q equals MC delta T equation to calculate the heat released. For this method, the mass, SHC, and temperature change are all of the substance heated. If you find this confusing, don't worry, let's do a calorimetry experiment for combustion. For this simple calorimetry experiment, looking at the combustion of alcohols, we have a copper calorimeter, a lid and a stirrer, a 0 to 100 centigrade thermometer and we've got a spirit burner containing ethanol. In this experiment we're going to take 120 centimeters cubed of water and place that in the calorimeter. We then reposition the lid and the stirrer. We need to lift the thermometer up from the base about a centimeter or two and allow the equipment to equilibrate with room temperature. This one is reading 26 degrees centigrade on this thermometer. Check that the thermometer moves, free, uh, stirrer moves freely. We then weigh the spirit burner. This one is 192.34 grams, 192.34 grams. We then light the burner, place rapidly underneath the water, start stirring with the stirrer and measure the temperature increase of the water during the experiment. Well, we started at 26, we're now at 32, coming up to 33, so we'll extinguish the flame. But it's important to keep stirring because heat has been transferred to the copper calorimeter and the water will continue to rise in temperature as that heat spreads throughout the system. So in fact we've now reached 34, just about, but then looks as like that's as much as we're going to get. Actually 33 and a half. No, 34, we were right, 34. Since combustion is an exothermic reaction, the temperature of the water goes up. When we apply our data to the Q equals MC delta T equation, mass would be 120 grams as the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. The temperature change would be 34 minus 26, so 8. The SHC of water is 4.19 joules per gram per degree Celsius. 
So we'll substitute all our values and multiply and our final answer would be 4012.8 joules. The heat gained by water is 4.0128 kilojoules.